Hello and welcome back to On Chain Reaction. I'm your host, James Bennett, and I'm the CEO of ByteTree. Recording this on Tuesday afternoon, where Bitcoin sits at about $53,500 after increasing 6% uh, for the day so far. Okay, so let's jump straight into the on-chain data. We're going to start by looking at fees. Fees remain in an uptrend after reaching $60 million per day, uh, which is above that peak from the last cycle that was about $48 million a day. The fees as a percentage of total revenue continue to increase, and you can see that in the gold line there. Despite having turned down over the last week or so, that uptrend that started in April uh, last year is, is still intact. Okay, so what have miners been doing? Well, miners have actually slowed their selling over the last week as price has consolidated between 48 and 50k. Like I mentioned this morning, we've now broken up out of that consolidation phase um, and we'll see how miners respond uh, and I'll come to that actually shortly. Here we're zooming out at miners' inventory over the last three years just to give a picture of what miners have been doing. Uh, remember, when new coins are generated, they go immediately into miners' inventory and then it's up to the miners to decide whether they want to keep them on their balance sheet or send them to an exchange or perhaps over an OTC desk uh, to offload them for cash. And we can see that you know the blue line there, the, the bar chart, uh, that there's just been a continual decrease in inventory. So there's less and less Bitcoin available, new Bitcoin available uh, that haven't already hit the market. Um, and uh, if we look at the next slide here, um, miners rolling inventory is a product of that change in inventory. So miners rolling inventory here in blue is the difference between the new coins that are generated and those that leave the inventory. Uh, so you can think about it as a slope uh, over 12 weeks, uh, sorry, six weeks for this particular indicator uh, of that previous bar chart that we saw. So if you look at over a six week, six week period, what the slope is, that will give you the MRI. Um, and you know, there's been a lot more volatility in the last few months than we've actually seen um, you know, since the end of 17. Here we can see MRI went up to 165% at the beginning of February, which was a consequence of very um, large increase in miners offloading their inventory in order to capture that rising price. So the price went to about uh, $42,000 dollars on the 8th of January, I believe, which was the new local high. Miners saw that and saw the opportunity to offload their inventory and did that in force. Then after that, you know, looking back at the previous chart, we see actually inventories are running really low. And so although price has started to rise again and went up to that $58,000 mark, inventories didn't respond on that occasion. And I think it's largely because uh, they've just depleted their supplies. So we get into this really interesting dynamic where we're looking at new fund inflows versus new coins being issued. Um, partly sort of understood as the stock to flow model, but it's really an, an evolution of that concept, uh, which is yes, there's a limited amount of Bitcoin that can ever be issued, but the price, the market price, is at the equilibrium between those new coins coming into the market that have been issued and the actual demand for new coins. We call that excess demand and we're going to have a look at that uh, shortly. Before we go into that though, I just wanted to look at MRI on a, on a shorter time frame. So I showed you before the volatility, the peaks and the troughs uh, up to 165%. And now, uh, over the last couple of days, we're seeing negative MRI, so dropping below 100%. This is a seven day uh, rolling average as opposed to the six week uh, that I showed you before. And the seven day we can track live on the Bytree terminal under the featured chart section. Now, why this is interesting is because going to the next, uh, next slide, we can start to understand the impact that, well, I will show you shortly the impact that that has on price. Um, because of the fund flows that are coming in. So that European fund flows is money going into institutional exchange traded products uh, across Europe. Uh, so that's your XBT product uh, from CoinShares and your uh, Bitcoin product from 21 shares. You've got Han ETF uh, have got a Bitcoin product uh, and you've also got Wisdom Tree have got a Bitcoin product. 
we aggregate um, those volumes and uh, of inflows and we we look at them here on the this is actually taken from the Bloomberg terminal um, what I wanted to show you is that these fund flows have really strongly correlated with the increase in Bitcoin price that we've seen over the last couple of months the brown circles there mark the local peaks the 42k I mentioned earlier on the 8th of January and then the $58,000 mark there uh, on I think it's the 21st of February and you can see that those peaks really correlated again with those surges in fund flows we remain in an uptrend higher highs higher lows uh, in terms of new flows coming into the market um, and you know this is data as of uh, yesterday the 8th of March um, and today we're the 9th of March I think when we look back at this data we will have seen that fund flows have increased again today uh, which has contributed to that $53,500 price we see as of recording. Okay, so um, the next slide here is where it gets really interesting. We've looked at the MRI, uh, which is the difference between new coin being generated and those going into the market. Um, and we've looked at fund inflows. So that's the supply side from the MRI and then the demand side from the fund inflows. Now, I know there are a lot of different ways that you can buy Bitcoin, but when we get to this $1 trillion market cap, the actual incremental new demand we need in order to keep doubling the price or, or driving the price up actually rises larger and larger. So this is really a job, if you like, for the institutions um, in order to keep the momentum in the price rather than retail. Institutions have got much bigger ticket sizes um, than what you typically see through uh, Coinbase. Um, well, and, and just to put that in perspective, in fact, I think Coinbase, as of a, a month ago or so, had ninety billion dollars of assets, and over forty billion of those, uh, just in the Bitcoin, uh, is relating to uh, Grayscale, who custody with Coinbase. So you know, just the Grayscale Bitcoin product alone makes up almost half of all Coinbase's um, assets under management. Uh, and so, you know, it's a really interesting picture that helps you weigh up, you know, the significance of these different actors uh, in the market. Okay, so we've got the demand side and we've got the supply side, and now we can bring it all together in the excess demand model that we've developed at ByteTree. So the excess demand looks at the amount of new uh, inflows coming through these institutional products less the miner outflow, so those new coins that are entering into the market through miners. Um, and the product of that equation you can see here in the orange line. So excess demand, when it accelerates, um, you can see highlighted in the green areas, drives the price up, which you can see in the dark blue line. And when excess demand falls, subsequently we see weak price action or a falling price because there's new supply coming into the market, but no serious money to be able to buy that up. It's really an evolution of the stock to flow model, which suggests that, okay, there's a depleting supply into the future. But the big piece that's been missing from that model, which we're looking at here, is the demand side of the equation relative to that new supply. Looking back at this uh, relationship over time, now in 2020 and 2021 is the first time that we've seen excess demand of this um, size and that's really um, relatable to the fact that the institutional architecture is now in place through the different funds we've mentioned to allow these big tickets to come in and it's why we're seeing such a rally in this uh, current bull market. So that's all from me for now. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out at info at bytetree.com. Keep an eye on bytetree.com's uh, live data for a lot of the relationships we've looked at here today. Uh, and as well at the Bytetree Asset Management website, where we'll be publishing fund flows live from next week. With that said, have a great week and we'll see you next time.